All right. Well, thank you back to everyone who's been to the first uh, couple sessions that we've had. And welcome to those of you who this is your first live session. Um, you're joining the uh, collaboration and partnership uh session for the CPH review session brought to you by the MBPHE. Um, so my name is Ashley Mueller. I am the manager of educational programs. And just as the last few sessions, and then I could see many of you are very experienced now, um, we will have chat open so you can interact. And um, the Q&A section, please place your questions in there for our presenter so she can answer them at the end of her presentation. Um, and we still are doing our raffle. So once again, we will be giving away another one of the APHA study guides. Our last um, our last winner was Thomas Curran. So congratulations to Thomas. Um, and with that, I would like to um, introduce our speaker today, Sabrina Dubois. So Sabrina Dubois is a doctoral candidate at the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern University. She holds a master in public health from the University of Alberta, Canada, and is certified in public health since 2016. Since then, Serena has worked as a research consultant at the School of Public Health in the University of Alberta, working on a team of clinical experts on Canada's largest epidemiological cohort of medical cannabis users and measuring their health outcomes. For her doctorate dis her, her doctoral dissertation, Serena is studying the association of medical cannabis with pain levels in opioids in Illinois' opioid alternative pilot program. With MBPHE, Serena has been volunteering as an exam item writer and reviewer, and in 2022, she was appointed to the member of the CPH Partnership Development Task Force. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Serena, and Serena will um, go over our presentation today. Hi, everybody. Oh, I love the person who's like, I love Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. So excited to join you. Um, again, my name is Serena Dubois. I'm on my last three months of my PhD at Northwestern, and very soon I'll be moving over to the U.S. very, very soon this summer. Um, with the uh, my background in with the CPH, I've been with the CPH and BPHE since 2014. It's coming up on 10 years. I was one of the very first guinea pigs to write the CPH exam um, here in Canada. So since then, I've been kind of been um, representing the Canadian side and trying to merge with the U.S. side um, on this exam and create and creating more public health professionals. So without further ado, um, let's get started. So I'm going to talk for about an hour like this uh, section is not that difficult, but I want to make sure that you are successful and you know exactly what concepts to focus on for this exam. With that being said, uh, feel free to ans uh, ask any questions you have, and then we will be doing a lot of interactive activity in this session. So just giving you fair warning, I'm gonna be asking for your participation. And before we do anything, Ashley, you know this, I always have this book with me. If you are serious about writing this exam, I'm not pitching this, but I am. It This is a really great exam review guide. Uh, one of the editors, you can see Jamie A. Corbin, she's, she actually is one of the exam item writers with me on the exam item writing committee. So. Uh, where she's very well versed. Uh, this really gives a great, you know, guide set step by step for all the different domains of the exam. You know, there's a lot of information, so I highly re uh, recommend it. Also, after every domain in the book, there are some really good exam questions. Of course, they're not multiple choice; they're kind of a mix, but it gets you really thinking about the main concepts you need to know for the exam. Okay, so today what are we doing? So we're looking at collaboration and partnership. And just as a review, it'll be 10% of, of your exam today. Aw, oh, Grant, yeah, you got it. Yep, that's right. <laughs> okay, so these are the 15 kind of subsects under the domain, and we will be kind of going through all of them as we go through it. So without further ado, I gave you fair warning about the participation. Let's do it. What is a partnership? Can somebody tell me? And I've got the chat out. I can see you. If you want to unmute yourself, if that is accessible, I don't know, Ashley, if they're available to unmute, but feel free to write out what is a partnership. Yep. If you raise your hand, you will be able, I can unmute you. Um, okay. Gotcha. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know there's 150 something of us. So Okay, Amy says, the working collaboratively with other professionals to meet a goal, okay? 
Abby says reciprocal relationship to advance common work. Asia says collaboration between two or more groups. Rhonda, a group of people working together to meet a common goal. We're seeing a lot of good repeats here. Collaboration between a group, relationship between organizations, individuals. Okay, so looking at that chat, do you agree with those definitions? Would you change something? Would you revise something? Anything else that the definitions presented in the chat has not covered? Investment from both parties. Mm, okay. Mutually beneficial agreement. Okay, you're all on, yes, equal power. Okay, good. Anything else? Working with groups to fulfill goals, mission, and vision could be a formal legal relationship. See, you're all experts already. I don't even have to tell you. So without further ado, you need to know this. If you don't know what this is, have a notebook, write it out. So I'm gonna write, read out to you what a public health partnership is. Obviously there's many different definitions. Before the exam, a public health partnership is a relationship in which two or more entities work together for a common purpose, okay? So this could be between individuals, organizations, systems, programs, different levels. But the biggest thing is that it's two or more entities working together for one common purpose. Okay, so this the next part's really important. See how I wrote it in red? If it's in red, you know it's important. This is typically in a contract or some sort of written agreement. This is really important. So a partnership is typically written, it has a written agreement or contract. Partnerships can also be internal within organizations or external by something called outsourcing, having partnerships outside the organization. Clear as mud. So that is what a public health partnership is. Remember, okay, ready to move on. So knowing that it's typically in a written agreement and contract, what are some examples of public health partnerships? Remember the definition, written agreement or formal contract between two entities. Can somebody give me an example of some examples of public health partnerships? Yes, yes, NATO, yeah, that's large, but yes. Health information exchange, that's a great one. What about some smaller levels, like lower levels? What are some public health partnerships? Oh, Abby, that's a good one. Data sharing between your public health department and WIC. Yep. So LaShawn, good, good. Memorandum of understanding is a type of agreement. Yes. Okay, so everybody's getting it. So community organizations in itself is not a partnership, but you could form a partnership between a community organization and another entity. Again, Bertha, advisory boards in itself is not a partnership, but a partnership would be like an advisory board partnering with the hospital. Does that make sense, everybody? So an organization itself can't be just a partnership. You have to be able to identify both parties and it has to be a written agreement or a contract. Is that clear? Okay, know that, yes. Everybody's doing so good. Okay, so now that you know what a partnership is, there are four types that you need to know for the exam. Okay, anybody know what the four types are? <laughs> Any guesses? We got to play some like drum music back here. Um, any ideas of the four levels of partnerships? No right or wrong answer. I just want to see where you're at. Okay, you're getting there. Yep. Yep. Coalition. Yes, yes, yes. You got it. Okay, so let's, it's, the chat is a little bit quieter. So let's, it's in the textbook, but that's probably cheating. <laughs> yeah, it's no cheating. Um, so let's go dive in. Let's, let's figure it out. You got it. The first one is an advisory board or committee. Okay, so advisory board or committee. Now, if any of these following terms, you're looking at it going, oh, I don't know what that is write it down right now. So advisory board can serve multiple functions. Oh, why is this not working? There you go. Advisory board or committee can serve multiple functions. They inform the design, implementation, and evaluation of public health programs, and they can do all sorts of things. That's the whole purpose of an advisory board or committee. Multiple functions, and it depends what your advisory committee is assigned to do. That is the big thing. They can serve multiple functions. Is that, I hope that's clear. They can serve multiple functions. Okay. So now that you know what an advisory board is, they can kind of do kind of everything, you know, um, what is a task force? 
Any ideas? Do you like my pictures? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you know what a advisory board does, what, a, what would a task force be? Oh, Bertha, yes. Works on specific goals. Love the imagery. Anna Marie, thank you. I tried. Focus specific. You're all, you, you see, you're all experts. You don't even need my help. You're, you're all getting it. So you got it. Task force action oriented. So going back to advisory, that's multiple functions broad. Task force is action oriented group with a specific issue or priority. Couple things with this task force. It could be time limited. It doesn't have to be, but could be. Um, and it's, it's under an overseeing committee. So we're looking at different levels. So advisory board could be kind of overseeing. It's a little bit higher level, broad, right? Task force is specific. It's niche. It ha it's constituted by a committee or some sort of institution. And Latrice, you got it. Specific projects. Working together to target a specific need. Madison, great. Everybody got it. Or is it clear the difference between advisory board and a task force? Okay. We're moving on. You're going to like the next one. Okay, somebody mentioned this before. Okay, so you got an advisory board. Then you got a task force. What the heck is this? What is the coalition then? And you got to know these terms because you're going to get something on the exam where there's a description and they're going to ask you, is this a task force coalition or is it an advisory board? You're going to, you're going to ask, what would a coalition then be? A group of diverse organizations. Oh, Victoria, you're so smart. Uh-huh. She's correct. Oh, you're correct. <laughs> yep. You got it. Okay. Coalition. Okay, this is really important. I didn't put this in red, but I should have. Formal alliance of organizations. That's really, really important. That act jointly, not between individuals, right? It's between organizations. Does that make sense? There, In this case, there is very defined leadership structure. Um, they share usually resources together. And it could, this again, this is flexible. It could be time limited or, you know, over a period of time. And there could be different levels of coalition. So they could be operate at the community, state, regional, or national level. But biggest thing is it's a, a formal alliance of organizations. I'm going to go back to the advisory board. Broad, they can do anything. Task force, niche, underneath an overseeing committee, action-oriented. Coalition is between two uh, organizations that have a formal alliance. And remember, all of these are partnerships, so they have a written agreement or contract. Yes? Okay. All right. Moving on. Next one. You'll love the next one. I keep saying that, but you're just going to get better. All right. What's the next one? Executive board or committee? By the way, I love this show. If you don't love this show, you got to rewatch it. Executive board or committee. What is that now? This is our last, there are four types. This is the last one. Any ideas? I'm going to give a few seconds for people to type. Okay. Anna Marie, what do you mean by leadership? Because remember, we're talking about a partnership. So panel of decision makers. Okay. <laughs> Money. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the best answer today. I love it. I love it. Okay. Ronak make sure, makes sure that the actions are carried out. Leadership of one or more organizations. Ownership within one organization. Okay. How about I ask this? If it's a partnership, what would they do? Okay, yeah, Victoria. Victoria, yeah, you you just know all of it, hey? <laughs> okay, so executive board or committee, you're all right. So this one's, and again, a, it's a formal group. Fight with each other. <laughs> okay, so this one is a formal group. It's not an alliance, it's a group, okay? Um, in this case, they have to, membership may be elected. So there may be actual elections or nominations to get into this formal group. And somebody said this, I can't remember, I think it was Renak. Um, they provide oversight. They provide, they oversee kind of everything. They oversee the strategy, the mission values, all of that. And they plan for the larger entity. Okay. Pop quiz. <laughs> I love pop quizzes. What are the four types of partnerships? What's the first one? Advisory. Two. What's two? What's two? What's two? Starts with the T. Task force. Three. My name starts with, it starts with it. Yes. And last one. 
exec board. You got it. Um, make an acronym for yourself. Write that out. You should know the differences uh, between the four. Okay. So if there's an example, and we're going to do a little other quiz coming on, you should know the differences. Great work, everybody. Okay. Now we know the four different types. We know the definition of partnership. Now there's different levels. Okay. And we talked about this before for the um, exec board. There's local, state, national, and global. I, I don't think I need to review what these terms are, but if you're sitting there going, I'm not sure what that is, go back to your notes and read through what the differences are. So there's four, four different types of partnerships, four different levels. Kind of, It's kind of easy to remember, right? Okay, let's do some tests. Hey, let's test what we learned, y'all. So I'm going to give an example, but you don't, it doesn't have to be exactly this, but what is an example of a coalition at a global level of partnership? Oh, we're, we're getting, yeah, we're getting nitty gritty here. Oh, Simbarashi, you got it, WHO. Yes. Yep. Oh my goodness, Jacqueline, you're reading my mind. Yes. Okay, so there's so many. So I'm just going to give you one example. You all got it. There's no wrong answers in the chat there. So here's just one. I'm just giving one example. Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America. I think somebody said it, CADCA. So... The reason why it's a coalition is because it represents members in every U.S. state and territory and global level because more than 30 countries around the world. Yeah, every, every single chat message there is all correct. Does that make sense? So you need to know the type of partnership and you need to know the level. Okay, let's do one more because we're getting spicy here. Okay, let's do one more. What is an example of a task force at a local level? This is kind of fun. And obviously local, there's so many different types of local levels, but this is just for fun. What levels are there again? Okay, so there's lo local, state, national, global. Those are the four. Okay, drug enforcement task team. Can you be a bit more specific? Suicide prevention task force. Yes, a little bit more specific. Uh-huh. Okay, so... Illinois, somebody from Chicago, I live in Chicago too, Illinois Violence Prevention Task Force. So state level, Illinois, Violence Prevention Task Force is the task force. Does that make sense? I hope so. If it's not, I want you to go back to your notes, reread the definitions of the four types of partnerships, and then just make sure you know the four levels of partnerships. Okay, so that's our segment on partnerships. Just a general what partnerships should be. We're going to move on because we don't have much time. I know. Back to the chat and no cheating <laughs> from the book. What is a collaborator? You're like, what? So this is different than partnership. What's a collaborator? And somebody wrote, Ashley, do you remember back in Kansas, somebody said, it's somebody who collaborates. <laughs> <laughs> which is the best answer, but someone who provides background info. Okay. Kelly, good job. Provides input or products. Yep. Yep. This is all good. Invites meetings for projects, consultants. Yep. Yeah. So these are all great examples of collaborators. And I'm going to go straight to the definition here. So collaborators, so there's a choice here. Collaborators may choose to form a partnership agreement but they don't have to, okay? And very similar to partnerships, they work together in a cooperative relationship, but here's the kicker. They don't have to be in a written agreement or contract. Is that clear? So partnerships for public health for the CPG exam, written agreement or contract. Collaborator, free for all. You can or you don't have to. Same thing, could be multiple individuals, groups, organizations. They could come together in a coalition. So very similar, but they're not bound by, by a partnership agreement. You need to know that, okay? Because if they're on the exam, if they ask you of an example between a partnership and a collaboration, you gotta know, okay? All right, here's some examples because you're like, and it looks very similar to partnerships, very similar. I'm just giving some examples. Uh, community organization, same thing. They can collaborate with, you know, state host community leaders, 
hospitals. These are just some examples. Okay. So community organizations, they don't need to be bound. Maybe it's sometimes they come and collaborate with you, get your input on a project, right? So free for all. Okay. So I just asked this. Let's check your knowledge. So what's the primary difference between collaborators versus partnerships? And everyone's like typing furiously. Yes, you got it. Everybody got it. Yes. Okay. Not bound. Good. I hope that makes sense because there's going to be some sort of case scenario where the case scenario will say that there, there is a two organizations working together in a bound contract and you'll need to know whether it's a partnership or a collaboration. Okay. All right. You got it. Collaborators may not always choose to form a partnership. Partnerships are written agreements. Good. Okay, moving on. That was collaboration. We did partnership, collaboration. What is a community then? You're like, oh my gosh, Serena, there's so many terms. What the heck is this now? Are you trying to trick me? No, I'm not. What is the community? And I will give you the public health definition, but just in general. Ronak, yes, a group of people with similar belief, collective identity. Are we a community right now? Please tell me I'm in a community. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Good, good, good. Yes, we are. Good. David, most definitely. I like that answer. Okay. So community, a group of people who share a sense of collective identity, common values, goals, and institutions. Notice it doesn't say collaborate or working together. It just says share. So that's the biggest thing. They share collective values. They share goals, but they're, it doesn't necessarily mean that they collaborate. It's just a community, right? Characteristics. This could be, they could share geography, ge geographic boundaries. They could share, you know, cultural, you know, different, different things that they share. It could be anything really. Social boundaries. We're, we're sharing the Zoom space. We're a community. Um, so, the biggest thing I want you to take away from this, because you're looking at this being like, okay, that's so easy. I already know it is. It doesn't say anything about collaboration. It doesn't say anything about partnership. Community for the public health exam is a group of people who share values. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to add on. So we're kind of doing like a layering thing. So now if we know about community, why should we include community members when we develop partnerships or collaborations? Diversity, yes. Facilitate buy-in, incentive. Yes, you all have it. You know it, voice. They're the ones that are directly impacted by the project or intervention. You all got it, Carla. Yes, Monica, Bertram. Yes, you all got it. Sorry, that's what meant. Laura, you talk in caps locks, okay? I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you got it. So, buy-in. They know what they need. They are the ones that are impacted. So let's talk about the power of involving community. So this is from a framework and this is from the book. So you should know these terms. If the following terms are confusing, you need to highlight and write that, write them down. So the reason why we involve them is because of empowerment. Community members can gain or expand their own power to create change, right? They can create the change within their own communities community capacity. These community members, they share values, but they can gain skills from the project. They can get skills from the intervention. They have access to power through their participation. And then that leads to participation. Uh, essentially, they're the ones that are participating in the project. They're the ones that need to be involved to have community change. Relevance. We can't just, uh, if you know what the helicopter analogy is, it's like, the helicopter comes into a random community, just drops off resources and then just flies away. That is what we're trying to prevent is these the intervention and project needs to be relevant to the community. Issue selection. So again, same thing. The community members, it's great if they can participate in identifying what the issues are because they know what they need. Carla just said it. They're chosen because they know how to lead that strategy. And last but not least, somebody said this too trust they know the root causes you know they have trust and rapport amongst each other because they are a community 
So these are the six power domains of community-led public health actions or projects. You should know these terms, okay? Um, and you should know what they mean. Good. Okay, write this down because you'll need to, you need to know this framework. Okay, you need to know this plan. I don't care if you have it not memorized. You just need to know what it is and where it fits. So it's called the mobilization plan and community health model. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just want you to know that whenever you see CCSS, you know that it's going to be under the partnerships and collaboration section. Okay. So essentially it's talking about why it's important to include community members in your project. We're not going to go through this, but I want you to go and read it. At least know what it is and know which domain it is so that when you're looking at the exam, you go, oh yeah, this theory. Okay. Now I know which section I'm on. Now I know what hat to put on. Um, yeah. Okay. Community development, community organization, social planning, social accent, action. And the point is, again, I'm going to say it one more time, is it's talking about why you need to include community. Okay, let's just take a breather. Let's just do a quick check, okay? So at this point of the presentation, everybody, you should know what a partnership is, the four levels, four types, four and four. You should know what a collaborator is. Oh, tell me again, what's the difference between collaboration and partnership? What's the difference? You, you, you're gonna be saying this in your sleep. Yes, Ronak's like, <laughs> yes, okay. And community, what's the difference? Community is share, they share values, but they don't need to be in a partnership and they don't need to collaborate, but they can choose to collaborate on a project. Okay, breathe for a second here. Just solidify those because we're there's more. <laughs> there is more. You ready? Let's go. What's a stakeholder? You're like, what? Now what is this? I thought we were done. <laughs> What's a stakeholder? Jeez. Someone who has buy-in. An investor, yes. Stake in the process. Shared interest. So try not to, sorry, mitigate trying to use the same definition as community or collaborators. What is different about stakeholders? Yeah, I keep saying investor and I love that. Love, love that. Good. Okay, we're going to go for it. So Stakeholders are individuals and organizations that have an interest or are directly affected by the project, okay? See the red, red? Same thing. It does not have to be bound by an agreement or partnership. They can, like stakeholders can be part of it, but they don't have to, okay? Interested parties, yes, but they're, they have to have an interest or they're directly affected. Okay, community members and stakeholders, some people use it interchangeably because most likely community members have an interest and they're usually affected. So they do use it interchangeably, but this one, it's specific. Have an interest or affected by your evaluation strategy, intervention, and its results. A community member could be a stakeholder. It's an example of a stakeholder. Okay, knowing that, some I'm not going to go through these, but I just want to tell you that we have them. These are some questions that you may ask as a project manager when you're looking for key stakeholders, okay? What's the problem? Who are the key players? Who's affected? Why are you interested? How are you interested? What types of changes are you looking for? So very similar to community member, but remember, a community member can be a stake, sorry, stake, community members are examples of stakeholders, but stakeholders not may not always be community members. I hope that makes sense. Make sure you get those two down pat because, you know, they're two different things. Okay. So two red, red definitions that you need to know from stakeholders is gatekeepers and opinion leaders. Okay. So Gatekeepers, they control access to priority populations or specific aspects of a community. Again, they're interested and they're directly impacted by the intervention. That's why they're gatekeepers. And then the second thing I want you to know is opinion leaders. These are, at, look, respected community members, I told you. Um, and they represent views of a priority population. Okay, write those down. If you're not sure, if you cover up the definition and I ask you what they are, you should be able to know what they are. Okay, gatekeepers, 
opinion leaders and their examples of stakeholders. Okay, y'all. This is great. We have a strategy to identify partnerships and stakeholders. Now we know what collaborators are. That's great. You know, you can come up with all this, but it's not good if you don't have backup. You always need backup, some sort of theoretical backup to justify your strategy for your partnerships and collaborations. So get your pencils ready. This theory is all, probably one of the most pivotal ones under this domain. You need to know, I even wrote it. You need to know this framework. You need to know it. The CCAT, CCAT, anybody have heard of this? If you haven't, all good. I'm showing it to you right now, right here. It describes the structures and processes that encompass engagement, consensus building, yada, 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 among community levels, leadership, membership. Process. So it's just talking, you can already see it's CCAT. It's got community in it. As soon as you see CCAT, you know you're under the domain of partnerships and collaboration. Okay, let's zoom through these because I think you need to know this. This is what it looks like, okay? And I don't, you don't need to know this framework exactly, you know, how it looks like in a Prisma diagram. You don't need to know that, but I'm showing you what it looks like now. And there's three stages. So there's three stages of coalition development under this CCAT. And they call it coalition development because it's multiple organizations coming together. Okay, so the first stage, sorry, I'm gonna just show it to you all at once. First stage is formation. Second stage is maintenance. Third stage is institutionalization. Now, if you're not sure what these are, you're like, what the heck is that? Go to your book and or just Google CCAT and read through each of these stages. Chances are they're not going to ever ask you like, what is the name of this theory? Like that's ridiculous. But they might say using a framework like this, at what stage would you bring a stakeholder in? And you should know things like that. Okay. There are four membership levels. And again, you don't need to memorize. You just need to know that this is under partnerships and collaboration. There's criteria to select your stakeholders. There's selection. There's diversity. Somebody said this and essential members, okay? I'm not gonna go through these, but just know that this is part of partnerships and collaboration, CCAT, four, four. Notice there's a lot of fours in this section, which should make it easier to remember. Okay, let's move on. I love this picture. I have a dog. Does anybody else have a dog? I just love dogs. What are strategies for a successful collaboration and or partnership? And this is from your own experience, um, from your work. It doesn't have to be from working in school. Oh, Pamela, I love dogs. Yes, active communication. Like think about collaborating with your peers, your manager. <laughs> um, what would make it successful? If you're starting a new job, communication, trust, understanding. Yeah, so these are all really self-explanatory, but you need to remember them for the exam. Transparency, open-mindedness, mutual respect, anything else. I think everybody got it. Okay, so encouragement of staff, yes. Yes, I love encouragement, you know. Okay, so I'm going to go through a few. These are kind of the, obviously there's more strategies, but I'm just going to cover the primary ones, okay? Obviously there's more, but for the exam sake, I'm going to cover the primary ones. And they're pretty easy, okay? You, you you know them. Have a shared, mutually agreed upon vision, right? You, you should both kind of be on the same page on what you're working towards. You should be listening. Um, yeah, it's, you know, you should be on the same page, okay? Include multiple perspectives. Somebody said diversity, open-mindedness, okay? Different ways to deal with differences and conflicts. Uh, having clearly defined expectations, follow through. I mean, these are very clear, right? This is all stuff that you know and you have experienced in your own work. Uh, how, how to create better and improved collaboration between organizations, individuals, you know, work peer relationships. Clear roles and responsibilities. One thing you should know is the four levels. Um, this is also part of that CCAT. Inform, consult, involve, collaborate, empower. You should know these. Oh, Daniela, yes, clear deliverables. Yes, you got it. Um, 
one thing I just put an example here if it's a really good example of what collaboration looks like is the Western Pacific Child Welfare Implementation Center they have a stakeholder engagement tool um, very similar to what we're um, proposing something that you might want to look at I think it's been updated since 2013 so um, but it's the same concept clear roles and responsibilities clear deliverables like Daniela said all very self-explanatory okay everybody moving forward uh, you, together, you determine a best strategy and approach, and together, you review what's been done, what has been working, what has not been, and not just making random, you know, random decisions, but making sure all your decisions that you make together are research evidence-based or informed, okay? See, these are, these are not bad. You all know them. Maybe... One successful way to have good collaboration is to create a partnership agreement. Somebody said this at the beginning of the class. Example, MOA. Does everybody know what that is? If you're not sure, look it up because that is an example of a partnership agreement. By the way, notice I notice there's a difference. Collaborative and partnership agreements. Collaborative, it doesn't have to be a written agreement or contract, but partnership agreements do need that, okay? Um, it has to have enough details. Yeah, you got a grant. Um, you need to be able to consult with everybody that's on that partnership agreement and making sure that you all have clear deliverables. Okay, so this is an example. It doesn't always have to be, but this could be an option. Last one, but not least, you know this. Open and clear communication. Who hates colleagues that don't respond back to your emails? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just one of those people. I, I need, I need you to respond back to my email, you know, <laughs> active listening, um, making sure you're both listening and speaking and sending regular updates to each other. Again, maintaining open and clear communication. Okay. Everybody taking a breather. We're about 37 minutes in how y'all doing, doing good. So we, we went through partnerships. We went through collaboration. We went through community and we went through stakeholders and we went through how to identify stakeholders and different types of collaborations. How is everyone doing? Okay, so the next part is kind of like the uh, part because it's a lot of theory, but I'm gonna, I've condensed it. So these are a few theoretical frameworks that you may want to just review, okay? The CCAT is really important, but these are the other ones that fall under the same domain, okay? I love how Sarah's the only one that said, I'm good. <laughs> Everyone's in limbo trying to absorb all this information. So the first one is the collective impact framework. So I'm, again, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but just know that, think collective. As soon as you see that word collective, you know we're talking about community, you know you're talking about collaboration. Oh, Anna Marie, I know. I love dogs too. I love them. Um, yeah, so C-I-F, write that acronym down. The second one, I think a lot of people know this one. Does everybody know PATCH, the Planned Approach to Community Health? Yes. Again, it's still surviving, <laughs> David. I know. I know exactly how you feel. Yeah, so just read through them. They're in your book, okay? Just read through them, and they're under that same domain. So... Just write out the acronyms and you know which domain you're on. A, B, C, D. Th this one I think everybody knows. Um, Asset-based community development. And essentially you're looking at the strengths and weaknesses and resources in a community. And then not to reinvent the wheel, you work with the community to mobilize the development and you create something called map assets. You literally create like a beautiful, like, almost like a logic model. And through there, um, uh, you build relationships, you mobilize development, and you work with your stakeholders to develop a shared vision and plan. So it's just a different way um, of doing it. Obviously, when you're out in real world, you're not going to be like, I'm going to pick the ABCD framework for this. And obviously, it's not that. But you obviously still want to have backup to back up your justification for how you're rolling your plan around. Okay, so she means the study guide. Yes, the study guide. Collective impact framework was the I. You got it. So Monica, the guide is not provided to you. I'm talking about the book. Uh, remember the nice book called the CPH Review Guide? Ashley, can you hold it up? Yes. <laughs> and so just so you know, I did put in the questions. One of the first questions was, where can I get this? I did put the link to get it. So if you do have a question about it, that's where you can get it. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's so worth it. 
Yes. Yes. So worth it. So, so, so worth it. You're lucky because I didn't get that book when I did the exam. You had to write your own notes, but now we relay it out for you. So it's nice. Okay. The last one, everybody map. I think everybody knows this one as well. Uh, this one is looking at visions. It's almost, it's literally creating a, like a vision map and then they have different phases and then using those phases, you uh, implement, sorry, you initiate with the community and then you organize your project. So it's just different versions of how to engage your stakeholders and potentially form partnership agreements, potentially form community, potentially inform, you know, your stakeholders that want to be invested in the project. It's just different versions of the same concept. Okay, so let's just, I like always going back and reviewing what we learned, but your course is more comprehensive even though you're going to be fast. <laughs> oh, love it, love it. Okay, what we learned at this point, everybody, there's 194 of you. You should know the difference between, and I want you to feel successful, okay? Because I don't want you coming out of here being like, oh my God, I will never write this test because it's ridiculous. I want to make it stupid simple for you, okay? I want you to know what you need to know, but also be successful and be, you know, confident going into this exam. So you should know, partnership, I even wrote it here for you, bound by agreement, collaborators, community members, and stakeholders, and I put in brackets, they have to have an interest or directly affected. An example of a stakeholder is a community member. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to leave that up there for just like 10 more seconds. You should know the difference. Okay, perfect timing because I didn't want to go. I don't want, I never like to lecture more than an hour and 10 minutes um, because your brain's like, pff. so before we do practice questions, we're going to finish off this part. It's going to take about 10 minutes. We're going to do a case study together and it's going to be fun. So we're going to do a case study. And I'm going to read it out slow and then we'll, we'll break it down. Okay. And we're going to just apply everything we learned to this point. Okay. So in May 26, so put on your hats, your exam hats in May, 2016, in response to a call from Florida surgeon general to mobilize communities around infant mortality, a County health department examined its infant mortality rates, trends, disparities and risk factors, and then organized its first community meeting. You see, you see these words now? For the Florida Healthy Babies Initiative Project. By the way, I didn't make this up. This, this actually exists, okay? The State Department of Health required county health departments to convene partners and set SMART goals. Now, if you're looking at SMART, you're like, what the heck is that? Write it down right now. Yes, you need to know this. They set SMART goals for five years of this initiative with quarterly reporting of their progress the first year and annually thereafter. The health department in this case study partnered with two public health researchers from a nearby university to present the county's infant mortality statistics and are planning to hold an interactive discussion with community stakeholders on possible causes and solutions. So we're looking at infant mortality rates, we're looking at causes of infant mortality, and we're looking specifically on with the Florida Healthy Babies Initiative Project, okay? The State of State Department of Health is now planning to hold an interactive discussion with community stakeholders on possible causes and solutions. Yep, Grant, you got it. You got it. <laughs> so today's case study together is we're gonna write down two to three on your own, just get a little notebook. I want you to write down two to three community members and then two to three stakeholders and two to three possible partnerships, and they have to be distinct. So notice, I I wrote my community and stakeholders. So they have to be separate things, entities. So just take, let's give you like three, uh, two minutes. Um, and I do have some example uh, example answers on the next page, but I want us to talk about it in the chat. So let's start with community members. What do you think, everybody? Community members. We're looking at the Florida families, mothers, yes. Hey, I love the fact that we're allowing babies a community by itself, the babies themselves. I love it. I love that. Expectant mothers, okay? Local pediatricians, a new parents group, caregivers of children, yes. Hey, military, Nora. 
any grandparent, okay, so like any family member who just loves babies. <laughs> Good. Okay, so just write that down, everybody. Just write those answers down because I want it to be distinct from stakeholders. Okay, so now let's do stakeholders. Remember, they're invested, they're interested, and they're directly impacted. Okay, uh, doctors, yes, because we're look, talking about infant mortality, right? Hospitals, yep. Child care facilities, local health department, yep. So the state department of health can be a stakeholder. Yep. Worship times, nice. Military again, health departments. Everyone. <laughs> okay, let's be a bit more specific. <laughs> Bertha, I do love your, your, your ambition there. I, I love it. Bertha has literally the best answers today. I, I love you, Bertha. I don't know you, but I, 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 we need to be friends. Healthcare personnel. So at this point, I just want to make sure everybody is on the same page. So community members, remember, they don't have to be in a written partnership. They have a shared vision or goal, right? Um, stakeholders, on the other hand, they have to be directly invested and they have to be directly impacted by the project. So this is the Florida Healthy Babies Initiative Project. Yep, doulas and midwives, yes. Teachers, medical examiners, yes. Okay, I think everybody's got the difference. Now, the last thing is partnerships. And remember, what is a partnership? What could be some partnerships? Let's, I'm gonna challenge you and ask you to talk about two entities forming a partnership. Okay, Rhonda, you already beat me. <laughs> You're too fast. Health department and the researchers. Yep, Sarah, you got it. Health Department and Public Health Researchers, same thing. Esther beat me to it. Florida Department and Hospitals. Yes, Epidemiologists and Hospitals. Hospitals and New Parent Groups. Churches and Religious Institutions. Okay, interesting. So again, these are all good answers. There's no right or wrong. But I just want, I want to use this case study to make sure you know the difference between the three. Okay, so I'm going to just jump to the... Some, some examples of answers. So yeah, see, I told you it's real. It's, I didn't make it up. Some community members could be mothers with babies, women who are expecting that could, they could have their own little community, parents, pediatricians. Obviously this is, doesn't encompass everything. I'm just giving some examples. And then some stakeholders could be Florida's healthcare workers, specifically pediatricians, obstetricians, dentists, right? Dental health, y'all. Yeah, you know, social workers, teachers who work at, with parent education, child care, and then policymakers at the state level who are interested in infant mortality statistics, and then partnerships between, you know, specialty health clinics and organizations that offer educational programs. So is that clear, everybody, the, those three levels? I, I just want to make sure like today, that's the one thing you get out is you go home to dinner and you're bestie or your kid or your whoever is at the dinner table asks you what you learned today and you can say I can tell you let me tell you the difference between collaboration and partnerships you can say that in your sleep good okay I'm gonna stop here Ashley because it's perfect timing um and I'm gonna stop here for questions before we do some practice questions so okay. we should be done within an hour and a half not even so okay. that's my perfect. that's my goal because I don't like going too far yeah all right, so we do have a couple of questions. If you have any more questions, um, please put them in the Q&A so that we see them um, separate from the chat. All right, first question, please clarify why advisory board is not a partnership in and of itself, but a type of partnership. Yeah, so for, for the exam, the partnership um, definition is between two entities. Do you remember that? So it's a type, uh, so it is a type of partnership so between advisory board members, it could be between organizations, um, but it's a type of partnership. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think the next one is then, can you explain the difference between an advisory board? Yeah, and I think an that's the same thing. Okay, so yeah. thank you for answering, uh, asking that. So advisory board is broad. It could be anything, like multiple functions. It could be as small as something really niche. They could still call themselves an advisory board. They don't have to be elected. They don't have to be nominated. They just call themselves an advisory board for something. Um, exec board is very specific. It's nominated. It's elected. Um, it oversees some sort of other subsects of the organization. Uh, it's much more 
I'm not, I don't want to say the word legit, but it is. It's it's an overseeing committee that has to have elected members. Okay. Does, okay. Pop quiz. What is a formal alliance of organizations? We're waiting in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it. Woo, okay, good, good, good. Makes sense? Um, are all partnerships considered a type of collaboration? No. Um, for the exam, I think the best way so that you don't get all caught up in the weeds, this is where people get confused, is whenever you see a case study or exam question that's talking about a written or formal agreement, right away, Pamela, you should be like, case of partnership. Don't get too caught up in the weeds because once you start getting into the weeds, you're going to confuse yourself. And I've seen so many, remember Ashley in Kansas, people were like, no, it's a, they started debating like, no, it's a partnership. No, 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 no. It's a, no, it could be. So don't fight yourself on that because you're going to, you're going to get very frustrated. Focus on the question, read carefully. That's what I really recommend. I've been on the exam writer committee for, gosh, Ashley, it's been a long time. And the biggest mistake candidates make is they didn't read they didn't read the fine print. So read slowly. Are all partnerships considered a type of collaboration? No, partnerships are written agreements, or, right? Written agreements or contracts. Collaboration could be a partnership, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Uh, Monica, you said, please repeat that. Which part should I repeat? Tawana, which one? Yeah, so the last statement I made. Okay, so whenever you read, uh, if you see question in the, uh, I don't know what that means, but yeah, so when you read, when you're tackling the exam, okay, so I'm just talking about the exam. In real life, this is different. Obviously, in real life, as a public health professional, people use it interchangeably, right? But for the exam, CPH, whenever you see a STEM that is talking about a formal agreement or contract, or an MOA, you know they're talking about partnerships. Yeah, so the agreement comes in within advisory boards. Yeah, so I'm sorry, Rhonda, if I didn't wasn't clear. So there are partnership agreements or written agreements within advisory boards. So for example, okay, I'm just going to give an example. Just this is a terrible example. Let's say we're an advisory board for the, this exists, World Toilet Organization. We just really, really, really interested in, you know, hygiene in the bathroom. And we're going to do a written agreement between our advisory board on what we're going to do, but it doesn't have to be an overseeing committee. It can be something small. So one has to be an organization equal, entity equals partnership. Uh, Bertha, can you ask the question one more time? One has to be, an, what do you mean by one has to be an organization? Okay, so I'm not quite understanding what the question is, but uh, so which partnership? Sorry, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, one of them doesn't have to be an organization for it to be a partnership. Remember there's four levels. So it could be between, you know, it could be between individuals. It can be between um, organizations. So it doesn't have to be like, it, it's, partnership doesn't have to be an organization and then something else. It could be within, remember internal versus outsourcing, remember internal, external, there could be two different ones. So I think we're getting in the weeds. So biggest thing, everybody, is if there's a written agreement, I keep going back to this, you know it's a partnership. If it's a collaboration, it's kind of free for all. It, you could have a written agreement, but if it's like, oh, they agreed to collaborate on a project, you know that it might not be bound by a contract. Okay? Okay. Just know the difference. And I know we can get caught up in the weeds because you all have so much experience to bring this to this table. And I get it because in real life, that's not how we work. We don't go, hey, Ashley, so do you want to form a partnership or do you want to form a collaboration or do you want to form, like we don't do stuff like that, right? It's it's just common knowledge that you know what we're talking about. Before the exam, you need to know what the difference is. I hope that makes sense. And 
So a a grant, yeah. Oh, sorry. I just Lashawn. A grant is considered a partnership. So you make sure if you're looking at stuff like that, you it needs to be able to fall under the four types of partnerships. So I think you need to be a bit more specific on what you're asking. So is the grant is the advisory board applying for a grant? Like is a is is the exec board working together to write up a grant? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, but I, I think you need to know the context of what the relationship is to be able to answer that question. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, Joanne, you got it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's right. That's correct. Um, yeah, between public health and school district, you create a memorandum of understanding um, to agree to work together. Perfect. That's exactly what, right. That would be a partnership example. Yeah, you got it. So for example, members of your youth program advisory board could create a partnership and, right? Yeah, so coalition, Shar Mitzah, is a formal alliance of organizations. So I'm just gonna go back to that slide because this is all really good questions. So thank you, I, I really appreciate it. So formal alliance of organizations that act jointly, okay? So this one, they could be at community, state, regional, national level. Biggest thing, it's not individuals, it's organizations. So Sharmista, is this part clear, the coalition part? Okay. Collaboration is kind of free for all. They can choose to, it can be individuals or organizations, doesn't matter. Um, they can come together in a coalition if they want, but they don't have to. So it's free for all. Coalition is very set. It's a joint alliance, formal joint alliance of organizations. Collaboration, collaborators don't have to do that. They, it's free for all. They can, um, but it's usually called a cooperative or integrated relationship. I hope that makes sense. Um, again, if these terms are not clear after this session, I want you to rewatch the session or um, get the book <laughs> because the book is great because at the end of that chapter, there are so many questions that test you on the differences and you should be able to know the differences. Also, once this is clear, all the other domains, the language that we use will make so much more sense, especially in um, program management evaluation. They all use these terms. So I find like this is a great, domain to start with and then everything kind of just falls through. Any other questions? Doesn't look like we have any. Okay. All right, Ashley. Should we get started on the questions then? Yeah. So I do have them in poll form. So as soon as you, um, if you just have them on the screen, I'll pull up the poll so everyone right. can answer. Okay. So we have about, I would like to leave some time for actual just Q&A. We have 12, yes. 12 questions today to go through. And then um, I'm just going to leave some time for you all to chat with me and make sure that you feel supported as you move on towards the exam. So question one out of 12, which of the following defines a stakeholder? And I want you to just read through it yourself. I'm not even going to read it. You read it through yourself, your own head, and you can use the, the poll. Let's give them a minute. Ashley, one minute? Yeah, one minute. Yeah. I'll let you lead that part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're halfway about through our time. more seconds. I do have one caveat for the questions moving forward, which I always say in person, but I always forget in online. So I will say it after we go through this question. So, okay, good. So everybody got it pretty much. So a stakeholder, an individual, a group of people or an organization that can affect or be affected positively or negatively by a project. Okay, great work. Okay. I forgot to say the caveat. So the caveat is, this happens to me every time I present with the NVPHE, which I totally get, is 
as we move to the next questions, mitigate trying to, I guess, critically at, uh, provide feedback for how it's written because some of these are retired questions and they're not perfect, okay? So, you know, some of you may want to be like, you know, oh, it's written wrong or that doesn't make sense. Try to get to the actual crux of the question rather than trying to provide feedback on the way it's written. Obviously, these questions are, you know, not perfect, okay? So I, I'm putting that out there. Great work. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, thank you, Abby. Uh, it is important to identify the right stakeholders for public health projects in order to, and I'm gonna not read it out because I find that it's distracting actually. So you can read it out. We're halfway through the time. Sure, Miss. That thank you. You're so sweet. Um, uh, I did in person sessions for with Ashley. I've seen Ashley before in person, which is so nice. And in person is so much more fun because I had to change this presentation because I get you to like run around the the room. It's <laughs> we do like a Shark Tank activity. It's so much fun. So yeah, hopefully we'll see each other in the future in person. Okay. So some folks wrote. Uh, C or D, and the answer is actually A. So, um, and usually when people go C or D, it's because they overthink, they're overthinking the question. So the reason why we want to identify good stakeholders is because you want to improve the quality of the project as stakeholders can give vital information and make sure nothing important is missed. Um, I think people get straight away by the whole point of C, secure financial commitments, but it's not always from wealthy stakeholders that for projects that may be controversial, but it's not directly just from wealthy stakeholders. They might want to secure financial commitments from stakeholders that are not as well off, but they're important for the project. So read carefully. Um, a lot of these are there to test you and to make sure you pick the best answer. A lot of the times, most of them are actually the correct answer, but it's the best answer. Okay, ready, Ashley? Yep. Question three, when stakeholders are satisfied, they may exhibit which of the following behaviors? I always like to see this one because it's interesting who picks what for this question, but. Fifteen more seconds. Okay. All right. So this one always people get kind of like up and down, but you all got it. It's it is actually a. Um, demonstrate loyalty to the agency because they're stakeholders, they're tied to the project. They, yeah, you got it right. Um, people find the biggest distractor is seeking to change things in the agency uh, because, you know, people think that, you know, changing things and moving things along equal progress. But if they're satisfied, there's no need to change things. Um, you should be happy with the way um, your stakeholder relationship is uh, with the organization. Um, so that was, yeah, so that's a very good distractor. And if you didn't get it right, that's okay, because it's it's meant to distract you. Good. Good job, everybody. Change requires a lot of energy. Donnie, tell me about it, my goodness. <laughs> so most people fear change. <laughs> Rant, how'd you know? <laughs> and they keep coming back. Yeah, you got it. Okay. All right. 
question four, I think we have 12 questions. So uh, the model typically used to analyze and categorize stakeholders for public health agencies is based on the level of interest and on which of the following. Now, we didn't go through specifically the CCAT model, but this isn't specific to the CCAT, but it's kind of in relation to all the ones like the CIF, patch, all of the ABCD, all of those. So you know this answer. Um, don't overthink it. All right, halfway through our time. Okay. Okay. So this one's another one. So as we go, it'll get a little bit harder and harder. So the so this one is one of the ones that are is tough. So the answer is the level of power. Um. So if you look back, this has to do with the model. So this is something that you just need to know. Is they specifically say level of interest and level of power. So you know it, it's it's a theoretical thing. So you need to go back and read through the framework especially the CCAT, okay? Remember the three formation institution, that, that section? You need to read through those because they talk a lot about power, okay? Um, that's all I can say about that one. There's really not much to it. It's just directly from community engagement. Yeah. So go back, Grant, to, that, to the CCAT framework and about identifying stakeholders. Remember that, that, that um, slide that I had about community-led um, public health action slide with all empowerment relevance that that slide yeah okay good 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 okay let's move along because I don't want to take too far too much time uh question five the practice of a public health agency contracting with external partners to handle specific functions on a permanent basis is referred to as with your time. <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I honestly, the biggest um, advice I would give all of you as you write this exam, just read it once carefully. Okay. Just read it once, the stem carefully once and write notes on the side of the main terms that stick out to you. That That's the biggest thing because they're meant to make you not doubt, but it's a second guess, you know? Good. So this is literally a definition of partnerships, everybody. It's an example of partnerships. Um, external partners, it, the word is in there. Um, it's called outsourcing. So contracts, um, yeah, but the biggest, the question is outsourcing because that is a direct type of external partnership. So yeah, the answer is D and A is a really good distractor, really good distractor. Okay, so I just want to give you a little dash of what distractors look like. Okay, okay, let's move on because I don't, uh, again, I want to make sure we're, we're on a good time here. Question six. Oh, you don't look back. I want to see if you get it. The sea cat <laughs> describes progressive stages of community engagement as... And usually, if you this is a really good example, usually you can usually knock off two and it's always the last two. You're like, oh my gosh, which one was it? <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence there is, yeah, is. people are responding to the poll. So I'm not sure if you want, you can put your answer in the chat and we'll see that there. Just 
I just love Caitlin's. I know it was a while ago, but I just love her message. Oh man, am I overthinking or underthinking this one? <laughs> yep, I hear ya. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. So this one, interesting. Um, the answer is actually C, and I'm and I'm thank you for not going back to the slide, but this is directly the theory. So it's F, sorry, formation, maintenance, and institutionalization. Okay. Um, this theory, everybody, you should know it. I, I'm gonna say everybody, everything else you need to know about kind of the back burner, but this one you need to know. Good, 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 good. Q and A. Let's just check in. Can we get copies of today's? <laughs> Sorry. So we're no. not sharing the slides. We've gotten that question, but we do have the recordings. You can watch the recordings um, as many times as you like. It's the same link I've sent out a couple times. Um, it's the same link for all of them. So you can rewatch this as many times as you like for as long as you like. This oh, one's yeah. a wordy one. So yes, it is. By the way, the exam Thank has you, been. Grant. Yeah, thank you. Um, the exam has been modified so that it's not wordy like this. I just want to give everybody, it's not, because we realize it shouldn't be a reading comprehension test, especially if there's ESA, like English language, English as a second language learners. So it won't be wordy like this. But for the sake of the, of today, we're going to just make it. Yeah, Nora, don't worry. It's not, it's just, these are old questions. But sake of the exam today and the review session, I'm going to use it. So imagine that you're a public health professional using the MAP model to conduct an assessment within the community and you've reached the third phase and the four assessments. Sorry, there should be an end. See what I mean? It's not perfect. You understand that the analysis of the legislation, technology, and other external influences that can have an impact on the promotion and protection of the public health, public's health is called, and this one, it has, it, the answer is hidden in one of those frameworks I gave you. And this is a theoretical question. So I had to put it in. Um, and it's totally okay if you don't get it, because I'm literally putting you on the spot and asking you to memorize and remember a framework. So take it as a grain of salt. Just try and see what you end up with. And don't be critical of yourself today, because this is all learning. And the only way you know what gaps to fill in your knowledge is to make mistakes. So, um, yeah. I'm going to give everyone but. I see a lot of responses coming in. So let's give it about 10 more seconds. Yeah, I think people are still reading. So let's wait. This one's a wordy one. So, um, and I, I like Zoom will send you out a link every time saying thank you for attending. Um, that, that email does have the same link, but the link that Grant posted just a few, um, messages ago is that link. So, if you're in here right now and you're looking for the link, click on that link and that'll take you to the YouTube channel that has the um, sessions. And just so you know, it takes me a day to get them up there. So that'll, it'll be up there tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay, poll results are shared. And this is actually very typical. The way that you're seeing like the bell curve there, very typical of our exam writers. So um, yeah, so the answer is, uh, is actually B, forces of change assessment. and C is a distractor because it says community, okay? So be aware there are going to be questions that will distract you by having those terms in there. Um, but it, the answer is forces of change. And this is directly from um, back in the frameworks where you're, with your CCAT and CIF in your patch. Um, go look at those. And then if the thing is, at, if the question is asking for the map model, you need to be able to remember that model. Most likely on the exam, I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to ask you directly questions like this, okay? I just want you to get an understanding of distractors and best answers, okay? Okay, let's move along. Okay, Anna Marie, no worries. Um, I'll I'll read it slowly and then I'll shut up so that you can read them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Public health professionals can help avoid cross cultural misunderstandings during partnership meetings by. About 10 more seconds.
Good. Okay. So the answer is up. And yes, the answer is A. Uh, one thing that I wanted to also let you all know is that if there's a word in the stem, most likely it will not be in an item. So I know that's a mistake in this question. For example, cross-cultural and then A has cultural. That won't happen in the exam, but I just want to let you know that's something that we fixed. So good job. Okay. You all got it. Question nine, cultivating which of the following partnership environments will support increased knowledge and respect for public health team members for each other? I'm going to shut my talking now. Close it now. It looks like we got okay. Good. Okay. Collaborative and participative. Good. 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 Okay. We've got a few more questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go for it. The map model again. I told you the map and the sea cat um, is organized around the following themes, except and again, this has to do with going back. And you know what? For the sake of this, you can go back and read it if you want. Um, but if you want to try today. Uh, feel free to give it a shot. more seconds. We're almost done. So yeah, you got it. Everybody's got it. So it is D. Good job. Okay. So we have two more questions left. And again, they are theoretical and I want to just give it to you so that you know kind of what to expect. Um, the ABCD model recognizes the following assets except, by the way, for the exam, we won't have questions with terms like except like um, ex um I think those are called exclusionary questions we won't have stuff like that but can't believe these used to be the questions on the exam back in the day so you had to read through them but just for the sake of the concept uh, try your best is what I'm trying to say because the concept is what is important A few more seconds. I think folks will get these last two very well. So, because you don't need to, as long as you know, yeah, you got it. So as long as you know the whole concept of partnerships and collaborations and the reason why you include community members, that shouldn't be, this should be not hard. It should be able to deduce what the answer is. Yes. So accept English, English fluency. Okay, last one, everybody. And you never have to see me again. I do. The patch <laughs> model. <laughs> um, guides users through the following phase, the same kind of question, except. Right? But Caitlin, I'm telling you, people, you'd be surprised how many people don't get this right. You'd be surprised. And it's all because we... They read too fast, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's easy to overthink, Caitlin. Very easy to overthink. Um, story of that. <laughs> I can't thank you. Okay, how All right, I'm going to close this one now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Okay, folks, this is my email. Um. If you would like to chat over Zoom about the exam or 
need some guidance, let me know. Um, I'm available. Obviously, I can't give you the exam. <laughs> Obviously, I'm bound by a partnership. I'm bound by a partnership. Um, but I just want to make sure that you come out of this feeling refreshed and confident uh, about the exam. And, you know, you, you are all going to do amazing. You, you don't overthink it. You know, you're going to you're going to do come out of it and you're all going to succeed. And it the CPH credential makes a huge impact. It made a huge impact for me getting into school in the U.S. as a Canadian. I think there was one person from Ontario that was asking about it. Huge. If you're thinking of getting out of Canada or anywhere else. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to ask for questions, Ashley, and then go from there. Yeah. Okay. So I did see a couple come in in the chat. Somebody did ask, um, let me just see. There was a good question. Do you have any suggestion of resources otherwise than, you know, the study guide, but to learn about this section? Yeah. So the book, I, I know I keep pitching the book, but the book is so good because there's so much on this section. And when you go into that book, Jamie has literally condensed it to 20 pages and it's amazing because she just outlines the key concepts. And what I would do is I would create like a beautiful flow chart of like write partnerships and collaborations, write all the frameworks under this section. And so you know that which frameworks you encounter in the exam, you know, you're in that domain. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We have a couple of people who found out that you're also a yoga instructor. <laughs> I know I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm I like to live my life vicariously through physical activity. <laughs> okay, here's here's a very off the cuff question. How can we take your yoga or kickboxing classes? Oh gosh. Uh you know, I don't know. If you're online, I don't do it anymore because I don't think Northwestern does it anymore. But uh if you're in Baltimore next summer, I probably will see you at Merit Clubs. That's where I'm applying. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there is a question about raff the raffle for this book. Yeah. Yes, I am raffling off this book. You're automatically um, a part of the raffle. If you're here today in person, I can pull the attendance and then I you're automatically enrolled in our raffle. And so I do announce the winner of the last session raffle at each beginning of the session so if if you are the winner then you would be selected um and you I would announce your name as well as you would have gotten an email from me before this so um and then there's a question about how many questions are on the exam there are 200 questions on the exam you have four hours to take the exam um and so that answers that and then do we have any more questions for Serena So Pamela, I know that uh, the one, the link that you shared that, that those are really good. Um, that is a really good resource. I will say that. Be careful because some people, it, it, you so know, the it's not aligned. are made by MBPHE and, yes, you got it. and so, um, they could be good because they've taken it maybe from a practice, one of our practice tests. So they've seen the questions. However, we can't say yes or no to that answer question you got it that's what I was trying to say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well if you yeah, have, have any more questions I think everyone you do have my email but if you have any direct questions for Serena um, then you can email her right here on the screen. And if not, um, the Zoom link has my email. So if you have any like logistical questions about taking the exam, then you can email me. But if you have any like subject matter tech questions, please email Serena. And by the way, a lot of the questions I'm seeing in the chat can be easily answered on the website rather than bugging Ashley because Ashley probably gets thousands of emails a day with the same questions. So go to the website first. It is a beautiful website. It will tell you everything about the exam that you possibly need to know per domain and then come back and ask because um, chances are the website will tell you. They're, they're, the website has been awesome. So, All right. And so everyone, thank you so much for attending. A special thank you to Serena for being our presenter today. Um, we really appreciated it. And we hope to see you back here on Thursday for our next session. Thank Just you. Quickly. Victoria, the domain sections are not mixed. It's sorry, the questions are mixed, but there's about 10% of e the exam per domain. I hope that makes sense. But the questions are all mixed, like as in 
It's not like 10%, 10%. It's not like this section is partnerships, this section. It's not like that. You have to figure it out yourself, which is why I gave you those frameworks and theories. If you see those, you know you're in that section and you know what hat to put on because your evaluation hat is different than your partnerships and collaboration hat. Monica, yes, the book is worth it. You told me the book is there. The book doesn't have everything, but it's a great success rate tool for the exam. I hope that makes sense. Any other questions? 